Let's go. Woo! I'm so excited for the future. It's my time. In one and a half year, I went from a lonely, chubby, looking like a Teletubby, to an absolute specimen of a human being, an absolute woman magnet, a man of brotherhood and camaraderie. Frankly, I haven't got the brotherhood part down to a T, but the progress I've made is extraordinary. In two months of deliberate change, I transformed from one who rushes right home right after school ends because I have no one to walk home with and I would refuse to confront that fact, so I'll just blast home. I transformed into someone who performed alone in front of the entire school. School, going out alone with girls, making friends among other classes, initiating outings and selfies. I had my first girlfriend and many other opportunities I missed while growing up. I'm assuming since you clicked on this video you're some level of a loner, perhaps not entirely, but if you're not an incredibly socially competent guy, I'm sure this video can help you in some way. Besides, I'm way too charismatic, you would not want to click off. Let's talk about fear, habitual thoughts, anxiety, shitty self-esteem, shitty self-worth, getting uncomfortable too easily in conversation because you get absorbed by your fears, too concerned with what to say, rush to continue the conversation because you're too afraid of confronting the awkwardness that it could bring. So you're just saying random things to keep the conversation going and that often disrupts the flow rather than keeps it. You have the perpetual fear that they could abandon you, they are having negative opinions about you or maybe you just entirely speak less because you're afraid of the friction and the resistance it could bring. You don't dare to attend social events because there could potentially be uncomfortable circumstances. You look lost in thought when you're with other people. I remember when I first started going to the gym, I was definitely terrified of approaching someone to ask if I could share equipment so I'll kind of sit awkwardly at the corner walking in circles in the same spot until they finish before I go use the machine I was shaking vigorously and had to like I walked up to him like you that me mine i'm taking that thing i remember being sat in a group of almost 30 people everyone would give collective feedback to one person it was like 20 plus girls and a few guys and the whole group kind of came together and said that i was too loud i didn't know when to be serious i was too playful and i was kind of berated for being vocal for being excited and i think that was quite a pivotal moment that made me keep to myself more and check this out this was me in a school camp as you can see from these images i was the man the only one woman deserved for the most popular i commanded respect so hard nobody even dared to talk to me you're on the train and you're constantly shifting your body posture because you're afraid you could look out of place in some way convince yourself you don't need friends or you don't need to make new ones you instantly put an assumption on everyone and 95 percent of the time this assumption is negative so you can give yourself an excuse to never have to talk to them perhaps you think that you are very compatible with this person you can absolutely become good friends but it feels uncomfortable you feel this invisible uncrossable barrier between you two and you don't know how much you can say or do because you need to be very careful about not crossing their boundaries you don't dare to text often or invite people out initiate the conversation because you could have mistook their simple friendliness as interest you're afraid they don't want to connect with you as much as you want to connect with them which could make them stray away from you maybe you try to push them away or prevent yourself from opening up you don't want to risk abandonment or maybe you don't like to rely on others because you're afraid of the disappointment it may bring it's too scary to expect something of somebody anymore. We don't know if they're just being nice. We don't know if they're just trying to be reciprocated. Being the one to start conversations could often display you as being too clingy, show that you have no other options and you can appear desperate. It can be terrifying to start connecting with people, to start opening up because they can find out things about who you are and find that you're unworthy of their friendship. You have to be careful with how you appear because you're afraid you could ruin your image. These symptoms I just referred to are a subset of attachment issues. These are largely formed by how your parents raised you. This concept we refer to as overthinking is your habitual thoughts. It's pointless and detrimental rules you set for yourself in order to try and keep yourself safe, to protect you from rejection. These habitual thoughts are developed over time through seeing things, hearing things, feeling certain things. And these thoughts almost never go evaluated. So most of the time they are detrimental and stay way longer than they should. These thoughts are developed by fear, which means all your social confrontation decisions will be made through a lens of fear, which stops you from being who you want to be, from expressing what you want to express. The perpetual concern of crossing somebody's boundaries, afraid of looking too desperate, afraid of being too vocal, afraid to argue, afraid to disagree, afraid to make fun of someone, afraid to joke even. These fears and habitual thoughts box us in. We can't show how we really are to people, say what we really want to say. This restriction accumulates and it's suffocating. You start to feel anxious as time goes on, in the middle of confrontation, in the middle of conversation. You don't know if you have messed up your perceived perfect image. I hate to be the one to say it, not really I 
don't really hate it. But nobody cares how you look like, how you appear, what your intentions are. They're probably too concerned with how they appear to even give a shit about you. <laughs> One thing we have to keep in mind is we are not our thoughts. It's easy to be angry with how you overthink so much, how afraid you are, but you are separate from your thoughts. You are not your emotions, you are not your fear. These habitual thoughts and fears are built from your environment and things out of your control. Your responsibility is to choose the actions you take and the things you say despite these thoughts. That's what you are. You are the thinker of your thoughts. Let the thoughts pass right through you and continue making the choices you wish to make. You are the judge and decision maker. You have full control of what you choose. So this is how I started the change. I'm going to be a little bit harsh here just so you give me a bit more watch time. If you have if you have social anxiety and you don't at least give some of these a shot, then you deserve to have that anxiety. I'm so sick and tired of people saying I'm too lazy or I don't have time. And they constantly share their problems but never try anything to deliberately improve their situation. If you're gonna complain and don't intend to do anything about it, shut the fuck up. I can't be asked to hear it. 15 minutes of TikTok a day is me time and 15 minutes of meditating and journaling a day is I don't have time. Are you retarded? You're actually full of dog water. So anyway, here we go. First, there has to be a change in your mindset. I don't want to be like that anymore. I'm going to change no matter what. I'm going to become the person I wish to be and no one's going to stop me. And I'm taking that step now. I'm sick and tired of who I was and now I'm going to walk into what I could be. From this moment, it will be your goal to become more social. You're going to challenge your fears and negative thoughts. You're going to be positive and excited to meet new people. You're going to learn to say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Deliberately chase discomfort. If you feel afraid of doing something social, challenge that thought. Challenge that fear. What is stopping you? Why are you afraid? Is it worth not doing it because of the fear? Focus on what you're telling yourself. Eventually it. Make doing it just because you're slightly afraid a habit. Go do it and figure out why you're afraid after. I chose to perform in front of my entire school because it was definitely terrifying. I chose to start conversations with people I didn't know in the gym because I was afraid. I chose to start approaching goals just because it was bad shit frightening. Walking over, vibrating like the reverse flash and I'll still get it done because we are the most powerful. But don't beat yourself out if you can't get it done. Resilience takes time to build. The more significant the scariness of the endeavor you partake, the faster your resilience will build. But beating yourself up over fears and failures there's no way to live this will only cause you to punish yourself to make yourself feel defeated depleted and depressed everything you are afraid of even to a minuscule extent you should still carry it out just because you are afraid even if it's just a teeny little bit make it a habit always chase discomfort slightly outside of your comfort zone that comfort zone will start to enlarge like your girl's mouth on my dick step 2 improve your mental health mindfulness and reevaluate your thoughts and actions meditate and journal remove bad habits from your life and develop good ones I'm not gonna go very in depth here because because your little shits will ruin my watch time. Meditation helps you become aware of what you're doing in the moment, of when your overthinking starts exactly, and you'll be able to catch it and bring your attention back into the present moment, rather than getting lost in your thoughts because you're reevaluating all the decisions and actions you've made and all the things you've said, and then you make less retarded decisions. You might forget what someone says and you'll be a shitty listener because they can tell that your attention is not directly on them, and then people will stop wanting to open up to you because you're too concerned about what to say. You rush to give advice. You rush to make sounds out of your mouth when all they want you to do is listen. Mindfulness helps you spot what your brain is telling yourself. You'll be aware of your exact emotions in the moment. If you don't know how to meditate, let me give you the most long, comprehensive, in-depth guide. Alright, you ready? Download Meditor on the App Store. It's free, everything's free. Go get it. It'll tell you everything you need to know in under 5 minutes and you have a whole session done in under 5 minutes. You're welcome. Journaling will allow you to pour out your emotions onto a piece of paper. It's like a friend that will always be there for you, whenever, wherever. You don't have to hold anything back. You don't have to be afraid of how it thinks of you. You get to look at all your problems and your worries at a third person's perspective. Reevaluate things you said and consider better options. You get to look at the big picture. You get to look at your thoughts that actually matter and rule out the ones that don't. You can think back on your social mannerisms. Are you constantly fidgeting with your fingers? Can you maybe introduce some physical contact? What would you like to improve? Are you having proper eye contact or are you looking off into the distance or looking at someone else while you're talking to someone? Do you stutter like crazy? Do you suck at expressing your opinions? Are you a good listener? We can seriously consider these things. Who the hell else is doing this? We're gonna improve at an impossibly quick rate. Think about your bad habits. Is your life messy as fuck? That's probably because you never tried to organize it. Do you cope with porn, alcohol, drugs, entertainment or competitive video games that give you pseudo levels of leadership and competence? Would you rather make progress in video games or in real life? Are you happy with your choices and your habits? And hey, it's goddamn fun to read back and be contented with your growth. And don't let anybody read that shit because you should be able to feel safe in that privacy. If you don't know how to journal, here's a long comprehensive guide. 
buy book open book you don't have to have a structure but if you don't know how to start i usually just start with what i'm grateful for what i'm concerned about or i describe what happened and i start evaluating how i feel what i can do better what i should do and what i wanted to feel like there are so many benefits to list with journaling and meditation but unfortunately you guys are mean so if i explain the benefits you guys will just take a shit on my watch time lastly we can improve our competence value and experience experience is unmatched find every opportunity you can speak to people and go no matter what even if you don't dare to talk to anybody there will eventually be somebody who talks to you which allows you to practice capitalize on these chances and try things out that you told yourself that you should have said try to be a better listener try to smile more try to hold better eye contact be conscious with everything you hear say how you react simply acknowledge it you don't need to evaluate your decisions in the moment go to social events join clubs take lessons talk to people in the library in the gym and wherever you are when you unwillingly face with circumstances that scare you that develops trauma avoidance fear phobias but when you willingly face things that scare you you develop resilience you develop strength willpower and good habits so why not be willing to face everything that should be the mindset let the world dump all its shit on you and you're gonna stand there unfaced show them how bad we want it how strong our willpower is and go do things you're afraid of maybe you're anxious because you intrinsically know that you have nothing going for you if you're not deliberately trying to improve your situation and are instead spending a lot of time on consumption maybe it's a deserved response maybe it's a healthy response and that's why you feel like dog shit it's your body telling you to wake the fuck up if this is the case you have to increase your value your self-respect how much do you sacrifice behind closed doors what do you choose to do with your time are you angry that you always procrastinate are you angry that you always make stupid decisions that you never have your life in all Order. are you angry that you're always afraid always tired do you hate yourself if so let's change that what person would you be that you love not what kind of things you have but what kind of person will you be what will be your mindset your attitude what will you think how will you make decisions you can journal about this make decisions your ideal self will make start building your value learn an instrument be passionate about something be vocal about it be expressive even if it means you'll be rejected become articulate become physically fit be vocal be playful be excited invest in yourself and build yourself up customize your character farm xp buy cosmetics and upgrade your skill tree this makes you more interesting opinions and passions give you character and making progress in the endeavors you wish to pursue gives you fulfillment and meaning and it makes your life that much more exciting so meditate deliberately seek out discomfort journal and reevaluate, and then you do it all over again every day people always tell me the same thing that they don't need a journal they can just sit on it and think about it and it'll be fine i think that if you haven't tried it for a full week you are in no position to say that it isn't valuable stop looking for quick fixes social competence is valuable because it is hard to achieve especially for those of us who were rejected sure you cannot journal and meditate and simply rely on chasing discomfort giving yourself more opportunities i think that builds experience and definitely helps you make progress but i think that journaling and meditation would definitely help accelerate that progress by a large margin when i didn't have a journal i think we only start to evaluate when things get significantly bad and who says we're a good judge of that things can accumulate i think it is important that we also evaluate when things are small i think that helps us make progress way way quicker and we have so many more opportunities to find out flaws that we're not happy to have and without a journal i find that sometimes we give ourselves very shallow substandard solutions because we sit there for five minutes to think and when a solution pops into our head we just settle with it and i feel like we move on too quickly because sitting there and doing nothing feels like we're wasting time people also talk about building ourselves up first before we start to approach people so that we'll have more confidence and self-esteem i was out with friends and i was at a restaurant and i thought the cashier was pretty cute so i went up and talked to her and when i came back one of my friends said i'm going to become successful and fit first before i start approaching girls i thought about it and i disagreed i think while those things are for sure desirable there is no excuse to trying to be more confident increase our self-esteem and our self-worth even when we don't think we deserve it we should look at the sacrifices we make the choices we make and that gives us confidence that gives us self-respect and therefore we deserve to be confident for example how many people do you see that are visibly below you in some way and yet they have more confidence they have more self-esteem they have more self-worth yeah maybe they look like shit maybe they smell like shit maybe they are complete dog shit articulating themselves yeah maybe they don't deserve it maybe it's their delusion but look because they present themselves in that deluded way their success rate outmatches your anxious ass because they actually give themselves opportunities with their inflated confidence this gives them experience increases their social competence even if they don't deserve it i think that waiting until we appear competent is not a great move first of all your self-worth will always be somewhat dependent on how you appear to other people secondly you may never be satisfied with how you appear so you're never going to deliberately try to build your confidence anyway third 
how many opportunities are you going to throw away waiting till you're fit and attractive by your own standard? We have to start now, even at a shittier stage than desired. It builds mental fortitude, resilience, self-respect, emotional competence and social intelligence. If you have the liberty to, I suggest you pick out how to do the work. It's pivotal and absolutely life-changing. I mean, this shit, shit changed my life, man. It recognizes your eccentricities, your traumas, your habits, your low self-esteem, your anxiousness, your attachment issues, and it gives you possible circumstances which you could have experienced that led to the fears you've developed. It's absolutely okay to want to be better, to use deliberate tactics to change who you are into the person you want to become. Nobody wants to have the constant fear of potentially being abandoned by their friends. I want to be respected. I want to lead. I want to be highly valued in every friend group I'm in, in every social circumstance I'm in. I want more authentic relationships. I want to express myself without fear. I want to offer my help. Protect people without the fear of coming off as ingenuous. There's so many interesting people I want to get to know. There's so much to see, so much to experience. Being boxed in by fear and anxiousness is absolutely torturous and I'm sick and tired of it. There is so much that I want to be and it's not because of social expectations that we want to be valuable. It's a primitive, biological, honest desire. Deliberately increasing your status might sound superficial but how is it so? The higher your status, the more you bring to other people, the more contented you are, the less you fear being abandoned, the less anxious you are and you will attract even better people into your life. Wanting to defeat this social anxiety is a great step towards the person you want to be. The world is in your hands, man. You deserve to be respected. You deserve to have good friends. You deserve to express yourself. Hey man, it can be exhausting. People lie all the time in many different ways. You can never really tell if people are being nice or they are actually interested. You see all these films, TV shows, how they express wonderful friendships and wonderful relationships. People who will sacrifice anything for one another, provide for one another. I want that, that trust, that loyalty, that genuine love. That is so beautiful to me. And I think those of us who were rejected always kind of long for that and we feel very empty without it we feel very lonely i know i deserve genuine relationships that's why i'm going to do all i can to increase my value to increase my social competence so that eventually i attract people like those one day we can beat this we are stronger than we think we are going to find amazing people we're going to live a life liberated of constant fear and anxiousness we will never box ourselves in anymore let's go we are the best there is i love you and i'm going to be there for myself even when nobody else is to better work